Hi, I'm Ted Whiting, Senior Vice President of the Santa Cruz Seaside Company. Uh, grew up here at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Uh, my family uh, operates a number of food concessions as well, and that's uh, how my uh, connection with Walt Disney began. Uh, we had years ago a car ride, Autorama, that uh, self-propelled cars, two people could ride it. Very similar to the uh, ride that Disney had in, when they opened up the Tomorrowland. Um, I would say it was around 1963, give or take. I believe it was in the spring. I know it wasn't very busy. It was an early morning, but it wasn't very busy. A Saturday, I think. We knew Walt Disney was coming. We, the word had gone out. He was coming to look at our ride because we had a unique guidance system. We had a center rail that gave the car the ability to go so far to the left, so far to the right. Different from what he had down at Disneyland. So the understanding that we had was he was coming to look at that guidance system. And that car were made by Arrow, uh, as well as our cave train ride. So I remember I was working right here. In this, there was a hamburger stand at the time, hot dogs, french fries, milkshakes, coffee, all that sort of stuff. I remember as a kid by myself looking out and I could see this entourage of people coming down and I picked up somebody who looked like Walt Disney from a distance. And I felt like, well, I'd seen Walt Disney and that was good, okay? So they were down below over here uh, looking at the ride. And after all was said and done, the story goes is that the management of the company that was here with him wanted to take him out to a fine restaurant for lunch before he headed back south. When that proposition was offered to him, he said, no, let's just grab a hamburger nearby someplace. Well, that someplace nearby was right here. And so all of a sudden, I'm in there getting ready. I mean, it was early, not early, but early in the operating day. Not many people around as I remember. So I'm in here working, and all of a sudden there's six or six or seven people standing around the counter, and one of them is Walt Disney. <laughs> and they start ordering burgers and dogs and fries and coffee and milkshake. I forget what it was. I was as nervous as could be, because I was now front and center with Walt. And uh, so anyhow, uh, I got the order together. I think I called for help or something, got the order together, um, managed to make it all happen, um, actually shook his hand um, and uh, welcomed him to here and hoped he enjoyed his lunch. And like I uh, like to say, I think it was the best dang hamburger I ever made. <laughs> so that's how I met Walt Disney. And, um, the lore afterwards, if you read any of the biographies of him, you'll know that Walt was really into uh, simple comfort food. Fast grilled cheese, hot dogs, hamburgers. He liked that kind of food. And um, so when I learned that, it would made all the sense as far as why he would have preferred coming here to grab something to eat rather than going to sit down at a nice tablecloth fine restaurant and linger over lunch there. So. That's what happened. Walt was here. It was probably the best hamburger he ever had. I know it was. Absolutely. <laughs> no question in my mind. I may have put two patties in it. I don't uh -oh. even know. <laughs> how, how old were you, Ted? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would have been 15, 16 years old. So that was pretty pretty exciting, I guess, at the time for being that young and saying, oh, this is this guy. Well, look, people of my generation grew up watching Disneyland be built on television. So, I mean, you had to get there at some point. I made it in the second year, 1956. But once Disney, Disneyland took hold and became a real phenomenon, um, the name Walt Disney in the industry was just like, he was iconic. And the mere fact that he was going to come here, huge. And the mere fact he wanted to come here for lunch, even huger. <laughs> um, so he was a big deal, you know. And, um, and that is how I met Walt Disney. Well, Arrow obviously was the innovator of all the new ride conveyances and the types of rides that, frankly, Disney began to make popular. Uh, <clears throat> Tubular coasters, steel track, tubular track changed the whole coaster industry. 
the corkscrew changed the whole tubular coaster industry. Um, the kinds of rides that they were making, I mean, our cave train engines, our, our cave train ride right now is been renovated over the years, same ride, but it's an aero produced ride and that Autorama ride that I talked about was an aero ride. Uh, we uh, wanted at the time in the early 60s to offer a couple of rides, that di the kind that Disney was making popular and something that we could do here and so um, and we had connections with Arrow uh, in order to go to them and, 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 and make something happen. So that, I mean, so they were hugely innovative uh, in terms of new rides and revisions to ride concepts. I think the other legacy <clears throat> for us is Dana Morgan. Dana, of course, is Ed Morgan's son. Dana grew up working at Arrow. Dana became general manager here in the mid 70s. The flume ride we have behind us is um, because of Dana, who was able to not only engineer it, but also to work through the approval process to get that installed. And of course, Dana has gone on in his own right to uh, create his own legacy uh, within the industry. But, but, I, but that began at Arrow. And his love for rides, I know he worked at Disney for a while, his love for the industry, uh, the quality of his workmanship, Dana still comes here and helps us occasionally. Was here last summer for a while doing some consulting for us. And um, um, he's retired now, but um, he, he's a big part of the legacy of aero development.